now as I, as I said, this, this book is actually about the transformation of the 4th Battalion, 39th Infantry. So he, he's flying out. And he talked about this about, in About Face, and we actually covered it on the podcast. This is a little bit more detail, so it, I, find it, I find it to be more uh, – cover some details that's needed. Mm. But he's flying out to this battalion, which really was having a hard time. Mm. And the guy brought him in. The general brought him in because they knew that, that – Hackworth was a hard ass and that he was a good performer that he if anyone could get this battalion turned around it would be him so they brought him out there mm. so now he flies out and this is his his first impression of the base where he's heading when I landed I couldn't believe my eyes or nose the whole base smelled of raw shit and rotting morale Toilet paper blew across the chopper pad. Machine gun ammo was buried in the mud, and troops wandered around like zombies, their weapons gone red with rust. These were the sloppiest American soldiers I'd ever seen, bar none. Unkempt, unwashed, unshaven, their uniforms ragged and dirty, hippie beads dangling alongside their dog tags, their helmets covered with graffiti. Not exactly what you're looking for in a good squared away military organization. Now, one of the guys that he brings in, he brings in one of his guys to be the senior enlisted there to be his, his command sergeant major. And it's a guy named Robert Press. And here's what he says about, about Robert Press. We'd also served together in the States as well as in Vietnam. And our partnership went all the way back to the same unit during Korea. Lean and mean, Press would be my new battalion sergeant major, the non-com's chief ass kicker, and new role model. You get a you get a good impression of what that guy's like. This is a this is a gunny highway scenario. <laughs> and here's what Press had to say about the local about about the troops. I, this, is, this is from press. I looked around and seen no one wearing helmets, no one carrying their weapons. Everybody in the CP, that's a command post, group was sleeping above ground. Sleeping above ground means if they get bombed, they're going to get killed. I didn't see a foxhole anywhere. Sir, this outfit stinks worse than we thought. So that's their first impression going into this obviously bad, bad situation. Again, these are draftees and it's even i gotta keep reminding myself myself that too because the whole time i was in the military it was all volunteer military and sure you get some slackers and some knuckleheads but at least people had volunteered at some point to be there mm. these people are being pulled against their i mean i think you're a better better example of this than me echo echo imagine when you were 18 years old i mean when i was 18 years old i was already signed up i was yeah. in Imagine when you were 18 years old and them coming to you. Where were you when you were 18? In the University of Hawaii? Yes. Playing football? Yes. Now, what if they came to you and said, hey, Echo? You got to go to the military. You have to go in the military. You're going to Vietnam. How, how would you feel about that? <sighs> yeah. No. Yeah. It'd be rough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And And you, as a disciplined football player, that's an athlete, you're going to be 10 steps above someone that's, you know, out on the streets of, you know, hate Ashbury, smoking yeah. dope. Yeah. But that's who these people were. It's a cross section of America. Mm -hmm. So sure, you would get some kids that were getting drafted from, you know, Iowa, a farm kid that's like, "Hey, it's my turn to fight. I'm going to go do it." Mm -hmm. And then you're going to get, you know, you're going to get every cross section. 